never get enough track oh! Oh! Oh no, 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 I'm sorry, but uh, it sucks. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know you don't even know what I'm talking about, but I'm so sorry already. I just, I feel bad because today's going to be the, the greatest podcast of all time and I, I can't top it anymore. So this, I'm sorry, but this is where, it's, where it ends because today we're on, um, welcome to the goddamn episode fit. Oh shoot. Are we on 50 or is it 40? I think it's 50. Oh my God. Welcome to daily. Oh God. We got a little soundboard action. It sounds shitty because it's like the trial version, but I'm going to try to get that hooked up and we'll see. And welcome. What the f- Yo. Okay, here we go. Whew, I got the secret. I got the secret to mental psychosis, mild psychosis. I got it. I got the secret. I got everything you need right here. And it came from this book, Man's Search for Meaning. Check that out right there, bro. I think I finished it. I'm on the last section, which is like the, ma- the post postscript. So I don't even know if that's like part of the book. It might just be like his final words. But it was about um, a Holocaust survivor who um, uh, descri- he was like a psychotherapist, I think, or some kind of psychologist. I should know. But he talked about all the things he went through uh, mentally through it. So it was really cool to hear. And then the ending just had some friggin' nuggets that also entrapped me in the universe feelings I was having in yesterday's podcast. How crazy is that? So yesterday I had the podcast. And then at night, I read this nuggets that related perfectly to what I was trying to explain yesterday, and it's the friggin' secret. And I'll get into it, but first, I'll, I'm going to use an example for the secret, and that is tonight, I'm going to an open mic comedy show. Now, hold up. I'm not performing 100%. My plan is just to go. My plan is just to go, and because I really want to eventually. I don't think I'm ready. I don't feel ready at all, but I feel like if I go and I go regularly, I'll get more confident or more comfortable around that scene and then end up just doing it. And I know I tell you guys, no Fs given, none, like zero, like just go up there, think about the stars, think about how tiny it is, think about the, how blink of a universe it is. It could be a freaking scale on a lizard skin sack and then just go do it because it doesn't matter. Those people don't matter. If they think they matter, then they don't because they don't even, not even thinking their awareness is so low that their emotional intelligence doesn't even understand that I'm just trying something out and there's something I want to do. <gasps> so it doesn't matter. So I might get up there and try to do that, but it's hard. And I want you to know I understand that it's hard to go over that fear of fucking not giving fucks because fucks are hard to not give, but you got to not give them because then you, you get released, you get liberated. So I really want to do it to prove to you guys that I don't, do, that I just fucking don't give a fuck, but I got I have like a million jokes, but they're like incoherent. They're just nonsense. So I don't know. I can. I know I can just talk, and if it get if I get in that groove, and that's what today's fucking psychosis is about. How crazy is that? Okay, so then I want to do that, and if I do it, last thing I'll say about the little show is that I will try to record it. If I ever, if I do get up there, I'm gonna have someone just give them my phone, put it on airplane mode because I know my mom's gonna call me around 7 p.m. or 8 p.m. whenever it is. I'm just messing, but that's your hello, mom. That's your hello. Um, no, I just, I'm just, I, that's going to be a significant moment if that's my first time ever doing it. Okay. I'm terrified, but I'll let you know if I give no fucks and I get up there and fucking get one with the universe. So to the, in the end of the book, he talks about, I don't know if I'm going to read from it, but he talks about it, what it is, is, um, the, it's actually like neurosis. He, he mentions it's called, that's very common is anticipatory anxiety. So when you have anticipatory anxiety. So you have anxiety anticipating something happening. And the example he gives is someone that's like blushes when they enter a room. And so because they don't want to blush, because they're thinking like, I hope I don't blush, that causes more anxiety. Hence, mild psychosis in the wrong spiraling negative direction. Spiraling psychosis, we can call it. But basically, that's what it is. I'm trying to give it to you in a dumbed down version because it's kind of hard on these words because I'm so smart that these words make so much sense to me. But like, (laughs) um, So what he says, the way to combat it is to have this thing called paradoxal uh, intention. So I'll try to read a little bit for you just so you kind of understand. A realistic fear like fear of death cannot be tranquilized away by its psychodynamic interpretation. On the other hand, a neurotic fear such as agoraphobia, which I think is spiders or heights. Did I say this yesterday? Cannot be cured by philosophical understanding. However, logotherapy has developed a special technique to handle such cases too. To understand what is going on whether, whenever this technique is used, we take a starting point of condition, which is frequently observed in neurotic individuals anticipatory anxiety. It's a characteristic of the fear that is produced precisely of that 
that of which a patient is afraid. An individual, individual, wow, an individual, for example, who is afraid of blushing when he enters a room, blah, 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 faces many people will actually become more prone to blush under these circumstances. Um, the wish is father to the thought. The fear is mother of the event. I don't really get that, but it's kind of like a way of saying it. So then logotherapy bases the, its technique called paradoxal intention on the twofold fact that the fear brings about that which one is afraid of and the hyper intention makes it impossible what one wishes. So basically, I think he wishes not to blush, but the hyper intention on not blushing makes it impossible not to blush. Whoa, that's like a backwards. Um, Okay, so what the approach of paradoxal intention is, is in in this approach, the phobic patient is invited to intend, even if only for a moment, precisely that which he fears. So the example he gives is a guy that always sweats when he like talks to people or something like that. And he always sweats a little bit. So he, you kind of make a joke about it and you try to make your intentions to do that more in a sarcastic joking way. So for example, he's like, next time you're going to sweat, try to sweat even more. So the patient said, he started sweating. He's like, okay, that's, that's all I'm going to sweat. I'm going to sweat 10 gallons worth of sweat. And then he didn't sweat because now the, the, his mind completely shifted and he wasn't afraid of it. He didn't have the anxiety of the actual sweating. And so that cures a lot of anticipatory anxiety. Hence, back to the comedy thing, which I was talking about yesterday when I was trying to give the analogy of the flow state when you're trying, you're kind of like locking up your mind when you're trying to be, when I said in yesterday's podcast, when you, you like, for example, if you were trying to be funny, don't even try, just try to be serious and be like, I'm not going to be funny at all. Just do it. And then your anxiety about being funny is not there. And then you're fucking loose. And then, and then you're on the canoe floating down the river and you're, you you do not have to paddle anymore. You don't have to try. You're not focused on freaking working to get down the river. You're just like, Oh yeah, I could just let go. It's kind of like the let go feature. But what was crazy is yesterday and all day yesterday, here comes the universe coming into play is I was thinking, how do I release myself of that? How do I get in that mindset? Cause I'm sure, you know, when you do things, when you write something creative, I like it in the creative sense, whenever you write something creative or do something, um, sometimes you get in that zone. It's like, how did I tap into that zone? At least I get in, the, in that mood sometimes. And a lot of times I feel like it's just kind of random throughout the day, but this gives me kind of a tool to kind of try to get me sparked into that zone. So when I'm trying to do something, tr- not try to do the opposite, but don't try, instead of saying, I don't want to worry about this. I'm not going to have anxiety about it. Sleep is another one. It's like, instead of trying to sleep, I already knew this about sleep, but it's still hard. But this is the way I use sleep is like when I'm laying there, I'm like, I don't have to sleep. I just want to rest as much as I can. And that's a lot easier in my brain. And I end up falling asleep rather than trying to say, okay, I'm going to sleep now. And you try to force yourself. That's impossible. That's how I used to try to do it. That's why I could never sleep. So the thing with this little anticipatory anxiety is that it can be used for so many different things. As he mentions, it's not like an end all be all. Sometimes it's permanent. Sometimes it's not, but it's like, sometimes it's just, um, all you need is that switch of a mindset to completely unlock you. And it's very weird because you would never think to just kind of do the up and that's it. And that's my story. And that's the secret to life. And that's the secret. And it's fucking, uh, to me, it's amazing because then instead of trying to like, okay, let's see if I can get in the zone, try to let go. I have something to kind of like, push me off the edge of letting go. Like if I try to, if I try to go do something, if I try to write a rap, if I try to um, do a podcast, I could say, you know what? Like that's kind of why I started the podcast. Now you see full circle. Why I said it's going to be the worst podcast of all or the best podcast. I'm, I'm in my head. I'm thinking it's going to be the worst one. Fuck it. Whatever is going to happen. And then it alleviates you and it kind of like opens you up. So instead of like tunnel vision on something, you get it. I, how many times I got to say it? Stop. Stop asking me. No one's asking. By the way, if you guys forgot, it's... Yeah, okay, so uh, <laughs> that's going to be a lot of fun. Can't wait. Do I buy it? Do I try to fire, find a free alternative that barely works? Or do I spend the $50? I don't know. Maybe sponsor me? Fair go, please. Come on. And that's it. Let's get to the On This Day in History. Oh, my God, my favorite part. I'm going to refresh it because I don't want to read it. And we'll go... Uh, it's, not a, it's not a young one. <laughs> a young one. 11, 8, 1189, not too long ago. It's not. It's like halfway to... I like the single digit or the triple digits, not the quadruple. Third Crusade. The Crusaders begin the siege of Acre under Guy of Lusignan. Ooh. Henry Hudson discovers Delaware Bay in 1609. Delaware Bay. Ooh. 1963. Martin Luther King Jr. delivers his I Have a Dream speech addressing Civil Rights March at Lincoln Memorial, Washington, D.C. Wow. That was today. 1963. 1956, Venice Film Festival opens, the 17th one. No Golden Lion awarded. Damn. 1965, Bob Dylan booed in playing electric guitar at a concert in New York's for good. I don't know why. Today in sport, 1972, 
a Soviet Olympic Soviet gymnast Olga Korbut becomes media darling at Munich Olympics. What does that mean? Wins gold teams all around. New goal for me. I want to be called a darling at some point. I want to be called a media darling. So 1972 Soviet gymnast Olga Corbett got it done in sports. I want to be. A, I want to be a media darling. So that's my goal. Um, don't let me forget it. If I say I have new goals, definitely not as important as becoming a media darling. So no. First things first. Keep your priorities straight. I'm a media darling. Okay. And now the dunk lifer of the day. That picture is fucking hilarious of me flexing on the computer. Um, Michael Calling, Kaling, I pinned this one. It said, wow, that was a really aw- awesome episode, really related to me, actually. That's awesome, and I pinned it. So other people who come to the video can see, like, oh, this guy's not just rambling. Sometimes it relates a little bit. Sometimes sometimes he, he encompasses everything in one. Okay, please give me some hype to go on stage tonight. If I go on stage, you guys will get so much motivation. So it's for you. It's for you, and that's, and that's how we do it. And oh, We do it that way because we need each other to spread the energy and be like, oh, he did that. I can do that. This. Oh, he did this. I could do this because that's and that's how we do it. And I hope to get that little fuzz out of the background. If I spend the fifty dollars, maybe if you guys help me out a little bit, I could have extra money to do cool things like soundboards and I don't have to worry about everything. Anything else? That's it. Thank you. Have a great blessed day. And um, remember, no fucks giving. And also trick yourself. Mild psychosis, like it was trick yourself Tuesday. Now it's fucking wake. What's the, let's see. Which, uh, what can we say with W? W's are hard. Um, fucking, bro, you come up with it. How about that? Fucking wake up Wednesday and wake your brain up. Paradoxal intention. Fucking go backwards with your brain. It's really backwards Wednesday, but, um, hump day, jump day. It's definitely jump day. Anything else I could th- hump day? Um, get over the hump with your brain. No, I, this sucks. See, I'm trying too hard. You got to think backwards. Fuck it. You guys are going to come up with it and we're going to do it. If I get on stage, bro, you guys will be the first to know. Let's go. Have a good one. Oh yeah. Don't forget. Toodaloo. Oh, that's the anthem right there. Tried to make an intro, ended up making an anthem. Oh.